Let's figure out why drones flying from the point of the physics, because there are forces. Forces interacting with Earth, gravity and the drone, the propellers and stuff like that. So today let's take a look at that and see why this thing is able to keep up in the air. Let's begin with a drone. We have a drone that nicely hovers somehow over the ground. It's a very old drone that looks nothing like modern models and it weights one kilogram. We know it's a known fact, at least to everyone who does not believe in the flat earth, I, don't, I, I even don't want to call it a theory, that there is something that is called the force and thanks to Force. Force is something that, if not opposed, causes the acceleration of the object. Okay, and thanks to Mr. Isaac Newton, thanks Isaac, we know that force equals time mass acceleration. Mass, one kilogram, so this is our M. And what the A is? A is the Earth acceleration. We live on Earth, so everything on Earth is under the influence of the gravity of Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second square. That means that after free fall for one second, the body will have speed of 2 meters, no, 1 meters per, se per second, and after another second it will uh, add some more and, and, and so on. Acceleration. The speed of the fall is growing. Because 9.8, come on, it's like, a, we can, let's say, approximate to 10 meters per second squared. And if we put this to this, we know that F, in this case, is the force of the gravity pulling our drone down, equals 10 kilograms times meters plus slash second square, which mean newtons. There is a force on the one kilogram drone called Fg from gravity that is 10 newtons. Because thanks to this equation, one of the best equations ever, we know that if we want acceleration of zero, and because when the acceleration is zero, the speed is not changing, and in this case also this means that the speed will be, after the ho stable hover, also zero, we want this, we have to counteract, counteract the gravity force that pulls the drone down. How? By applying the opposite force to the force of gravity. In this case, let's for, call it force T from the thrust, provided, of course, by the motors. So that the combined forces working on the hovering drone, at least in the vertical axis, are zero, so that the drone is able to either maintain current altitude or at least maintain the current speed of falling or going down. But because there is a drag, it will more or less come to a stable hover if the forces will not fluctuate. We, if we want to counteract the gravity of 10 newtons, the opposing force also has to be 10 newtons. If we combine them together, there is zero newtons acting on the drone. We have four propellers four motors, and if we divide 10 by 4, each propeller, each motor, has to deliver 2.5 newtons of force pointing, no, maybe not the black one, but the green one, pointing up to maintain stable hover. Not, not really stable, but at least hover. But nobody tells us what the trust in newtons is in case of motors and propellers. This is, let's say, a simplification from the manufacturers because we are not really like used to working with newtons. We prefer to work with grams, kilograms and stuff like that. So they, they only like give you trust in trust, 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 trust in kilograms when one kilogram of trust equals 10 newton. 
Simple, simple, more or less 10 newtons, because still it's 9.8, but never mind. That means if we have four, then every single propeller on the quadcopter drone has to deliver two and a half newtons of thrust pointing vertically up to counteract the gravity. This also means that you need 250 grams from each motor to counteract the gravity. With four motors and four propellers, each providing 250 on the drone that weighs one kilogram, you will not fly. All you will able to do is to hover. To fly, or for example, to gain altitude or lose altitude, you need well, not to gain, to gain at altitude, you need more. Because what will happen if our motors, instead of providing 250 grams, will be providing us with the whooping 500 grams of thrust each. That means times four, that means we have two kilograms of thrust and that equals 20 newtons of the force pointing upwards. Our gravity vector, instead of being zero, because gravity is counteracted by the force of 10 newtons, will be two times bigger than before and will have 20 newtons. If we, from the 20, subscribe, subtract 10 newtons, Simple math, there is a force, combined force, over here of 10, 10, this is 10, 10 newtons pointing upwards. Our drone will begin to accelerate vertically and gain altitude with an acceleration. Acceleration which is, let's go back to F equals mass time 8, 8, what am I saying? Come on, pop up, concentrate, I know it's late today, but mass times acceleration, so acceleration equals force slash mass. If we have 10 newtons up, 20 divided by 1, we have more or less 20, 10 combined, not total, but only combined, 10 meters second square going up. Our drone will be gaining altitude. Simple, simple, relatively simple, nothing fancy. This also means that the, ah, one more time, there is something also called drag and the propeller is not really giving you a constant thrust. The thrust from the propeller depends on the relative speed to the air and the uh, uh, density and the pressure and stuff like that. And the faster you are going, the less thrust, uh, thrust you are really receiving. So you will not accelerate forever. And because the higher the speed, the higher the drag. And this is the square equation. So if you travel twice as fast, you need four times as more uh, force to counter a drag but this is, let's say, very complex. What if drone wants to lose some attitude? Exactly the same. The thrust uh -huh, from the propellers no longer has to be 250 grams each, but let's say 200 grams. That gives us only 8 newtons. Oh, I will have to take red one. We have only 8 newtons pointing upwards. That means the total combined vector of force will be right now 2 newtons pointing down. And if we put this into this, uh, so F equals 2 newtons and the mass is still 2 kilograms, that means the acceleration of the drone down will be about 2 meters slash second square. This is how drone controls attitude by changing the combined vector of the gravity and the one pointing up. Plus drag and stuff like that. Okay, that was the simple case when we only want to control the altitude of a drone. But what if we want to move sideways anywhere? Because drone cannot like shift the 
force from the motors, because the motors are not really tilting, they are not pivoting around anything mechanically, the drone has to tilt. What will happen if the drone will tilt? Well, not much, to be honest. But it's an honest tilt. We have motor number one, we have motor number two, and let's say... Oh, and this thing over here. And let's say that it tilted 45... This is 5... 45 degrees. While motors still providing the same amount of thrust, the same force pulling it upwards. So, here we have... 10 newtons of force pointing this side, but because gravity is not changing, we still have 10 newtons of force pulling this side, the, pulling this drone down. Every vector, every vector, in this case the thrust vector can be understood as the horizontal value and the vertical value of the vector. In our case, over here, we can do something like this and then this will be the vertical aspect of the thrust vector and here we're gonna have the horizontal aspect of the thrust vector. As you can see, each of those is kind of like shorter than the original one, because in this case the it has 45 degrees and the value of, uh, of the, this, this uh, composite of the vector equals cosinus times the angle of work here. We have 45, so the 45 degrees is 0 0.0.7, so we have 0. Point, no, we have not 0 0.7, we have 7 newtons pointing in this direction and 7 newtons pointing in this direction. Now we have only 7 newtons counteracting the 10 newtons of the gravity force pulling the thing down, pulling the thing down. If we tilt for 45 degrees, the drone will start losing altitude because there is not enough force vertically to counteract the gravity. What to do when we don't want the drone to start losing altitude? We have to keep the vertical part of the thrust vector pointing 45 degrees at, seven, at 10 newtons, so it's able to counteract the gravity. How to do it? Of course, oh, let me, oh no, we can, shoot, we can do it. By making the vector over here stronger, longer. We no longer need now let me let me remove all of that. We no longer need 10 newtons when we tilt at 45 degrees, but we need 14 newtons over here because 14 is the one divided by 0 0.7 times 10. This gives us 14 newtons. So if we have 14 newtons, then the vertical composite of the 14 newtons tilted 45 degrees will be 10 newtons again. It will beautifully counteract the gravity of the, of the force of the gravity pulling the drone out, down. We will keep the altitude, not changing the altitude. And of course, we're also gonna have the 10 newtons of force pulling the drone to the side. Pulling the drone to the side. That means uh, maybe I should remove it and uh, show it to you only with the vertical, not horizontal, vector. If we have the same drone, beautifully, beautifully over here, tilted to a side, and we know that there is a force over here of 10 newtons pulling this, the drone to the side. Because we know that the drone is not losing altitude, there is also a vector over here of force of 10 newtons counteracting the gravity, and this is because the combined vector of thrust vertically and horizontally is around 14 newtons. Sideways, we are 
pulled by the force of 10 newtons. What does it mean? The drone will start accelerating, gain speed in that direction. How much speed? Or rather, how much acceleration? Once again, F equals mass times acceleration. Ah, why do I write G? It's A. Mass times acceleration. We know the acceleration. No, we don't know the acceleration. We know the force. We know the mass because it's still one kilogram. The force is 10 newtons over here. That means the acceleration equals approximately 10 meters per second square. After one second, it will accelerate to 10 meters per second. After two seconds, it will gain another 10 meters per second. So it will be uh, how much? Uh, two meters per sec, 20 meters per second, and so on, and so on, and so on. But because there is drag, and drag depends on the speed, it will not accelerate forever because the faster you go, the bigger the drag force opposing the pulling force, plus uh, the propeller loses some of the thrust when it's traveling through the air. So more or less at one point, it will stabilize when all the other forces generated around here, because from the drag pulling the drone this side and actually slightly slower, thrust from the motors will go into an equilibrium. The drone will maintain given attitude, altitude, vertical speed, which will be zero in our case, and horizontal speed that will be, let's say, 10 meters per second, 20 meters per second. It doesn't really matter. Okay, that's all of the science for today. This is what has to be done on the drone to keep a level keep a hovering flight and why after tilting it starts to move. This is also the reason when you tilt the drone you have to move the throttle up or have something in the flight controller to counteract this because if you do not move your throttle up, do not increase the thrust from the motors, the drone will start to lose altitude. That's all for today. Until the next one. Bye.